Hey guys and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, today we're going to measure piston to valve clearance. Uh, this is particularly important on any new build. Uh, if you've changed the stroke on the crankshaft, if you've gone to aftermarket rods, if you have a different set of pistons, and certainly most important, even if you're just doing a camshaft change, uh, changing the amount of lift on the camshaft will affect the amount of piston to valve clearance that you have. Uh, so <clears throat> to do this, right, so we've got our short block assembled. I'm going to use my old head gaskets. So they've already been compressed. Um, I've measured those. I know how thick they are. Uh, <clears throat> if you haven't seen my video on how to make uh, an old set of LS lifters into solid lifters, uh, go back and check that out. That will be very important here. Uh, we also talked about these in the video about measuring uh, for proper push rod length. Um, you should have already done that as well and have uh, the proper length push rods uh, for this step, measuring piston to valve clearance. So I've installed uh, two solid lifters because we don't want uh, the plungers to, um, to compress or collapse inside of the, the lifters when we rotate the, uh, the motor around. So we've got those two lifters installed, of course our lifter buckets. Um, and then we've got a little bit of uh, this is modeling clay. You can use Play-Doh uh, in a pinch, but sometimes Play-Doh has a little bit of sponginess to it, so it, it compresses and then rebounds back. Uh, so sometimes that can throw off your measurements just a little bit. Uh, and this modeling clay, you can get it uh, at any <coughs> excuse me any hobby store, uh, Arts and Crafts, and Michaels, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's extremely cheap, uh, just a couple bucks, and you can get a ton of it. So anyway, um, start by filling in, so I've got aftermarket JE pistons, um, and they've got the valve reliefs already machined into them, so I don't anticipate having any uh, piston to valve clearance issues, um, but it's important to check anyway. Uh, we're not going to take anything for granted. Uh, so take your modeling clay, and it doesn't take much, but just kind of fill those two pockets, uh, and this should give us a good starting point. I uh, don't want too much in here uh, or it will build up and um, it, it'll be all over the place. Uh, so we'll finish assembling this. We'll put our cylinder head on um, with our push rods and then we'll rotate the motor over uh, so that both the intake and the exhaust valves open. And as they open, they'll press down and they'll make a, an impression in the modeling clay. And then we can uh, slice this and we can see a, a profile section and we can measure and just confirm uh, how much clearance that we have. Uh, one tip before you put the cylinder head on, spray some WD-40 on the intake and exhaust valves for the cylinder that you're going to be working on. Uh, that'll help prevent um, uh, any clay from sticking to the valve. You certainly wouldn't want to get that on your valve seats uh, and have to go in there and try to clean it out. So just spray a little bit of WD-40 on there and that'll keep it uh, from sticking. Uh, next we're going to put in our uh, two two of our push rods. Again, you should have already measured uh, and know that you have the proper length uh, push rods. This should be the length that you're, you're planning to run. Uh, put a little bit of oil um, on the ends, um, both for the, uh, the lifter end and the, uh, the rocker arm uh, end. those in and then we're going to install two rocker arms One other suggestion I should make uh, while we're doing the assembly is that you'll notice um, <clears throat> one lifter is probably higher than the other depending on where you're at in the rotation uh, of the camshaft. Uh, rotate these around until you find the, uh, the lifter at its uh, or push rod at its lowest point. That way you know uh, the valve would, would be closed uh, and then assemble your, your rocker arm. That'll help uh, prevent putting too much pressure on the threads uh, to the rocker bolt as it threads into the head. Uh, you don't want to be trying to open the, 
the valve and compressing the valve springs uh, just with the, the threads of the bolt. There we go, I can feel that push rod coming up. down to its low point. This rocker's not doing anything, it's just helping keep keep the rail in place while I work on these. <clears throat> okay, once you have your rocker arm set up, the uh, rocker arm bolts uh, snugged, right, everything's in place. Now we'll rotate the motor over uh, gently by hand and be very careful if you feel any extreme resistance uh, stop. That might be a sign that you've got a piston to valve clearance issue. Okay, now we'll disassemble everything. We'll take our rocker arms off, take the rail off, we'll take the heads off, and then we'll take a look at our clay. Okay, so I pulled the cylinder heads back off, uh, and you can see the exhaust valve made an, an impression uh, here in the clay. The intake valve I actually never even touched, so I've got a ton of clearance uh, on the intake valve. The exhaust valve. Uh, just barely touched the, the clay, so I can already tell just from looking at this um, that I've got plenty of clearance, and I, and I had a feeling that I would. <clears throat> um, and you can also see there's a good radial clearance all the way around as well, so you also have to watch not only <clears throat> the amount of uh, depth clearance that you have, um, but you also want to make sure that that valve is centered relative to the cutouts, uh, in the piston if you have uh, fly cut pistons uh, because if it starts getting really close maybe in one corner or the other because that valve is um, centered a little differently than what the pistons were set up for uh, that can be a point of concern as well uh, but you can see on mine it's got a nice even amount of radial clearance uh, and then we can also we'll slice this in half uh, just for the sake of doing it and we'll look at how much um, the depth of how much piston and valve clearance I have. Okay, so we'll take a razor blade and we'll slice down the middle section here. And let's see if we can peel this off without destroying it. Okay. So here's the, the piece that uh, we cut and removed, 
then you can take a pair of calipers and then measure this minimum thickness here. And I'm around 165 thousandths. Uh, the best I can tell, you could also measure it uh, this way, a little trickier. Yeah, about the same. About 165 thousandths. Of course, depending on your application and, and what exactly you're doing, uh, that minimum thickness um, or minimum tolerance that uh, your motor can stand will vary. <clears throat> uh, typically, 120 thousandths is considered a, a minimum. Uh, but you'll have to look into that as it pertains to your specific application and, um, and what you're running. If somehow you're running aluminum rods uh, or something different, then obviously uh, some of those numbers can, can change. So, But this is a, a good overview of how you check piston to valve clearance. Uh, it's an absolute uh, must thing to do uh, when you've put in a, a larger cam, change pistons, connecting rods, if you change the stroke on the cam, any of those sort of uh, stroke on the crank, uh, any of those sorts of things, uh, don't take this for granted. Uh, get in there and check. It only takes a few minutes, uh, a couple bucks in modeling clay, and you can know whether you're going to have big problems or if you're like me and you're going to be fine. So thanks for tuning in to Scruff's Garage. We'll see you next time.